guys, welcome to what is probably the most highly requested video of my entire YouTube career, Instagram, whatever you want to call it. I hope this is what you guys wanted because I'm really excited to finally have the time to make it. We're going to have to play with the setup a little bit because the horse I'll be riding today, obviously my horse is 17-3 and I am a one-man team of me, myself, and I on camera crew and in front of the camera and everything. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do this, but we're going to get it done for you guys. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how to do hunter braids on a mane and a forelock. I plan on doing more videos for the tail and with a long mane and all these different scenarios. But we're going to roll right into it. So stay tuned and we'll start off with what you need to start your braids. All right, so we're going to start off with the supplies that you need for braiding. But as a disclaimer, this is all the stuff that I personally use. Well, I do recommend these basic tools. I'm not saying you need to use these specific brands or exact specific ones. Find what you like and go from there. Try a different couple things on the way. I know I've gone through a lot of different types of tools, but just play around with everything and see. What so first things first, you're going to need some kind of hair clip. I get these from the dollar store. I go through them like crazy. I break them all the time, especially on really horses with really thick hair. Um, I have this one that's lasted me a really long time. It's just kind of bulky and I don't love to use it just because it is so bulky, but it's a comb on one side and a clip on the other. I really don't remember where I got it. Um, it's handy, again, for the horses with really thick hair. I've also broken it, obviously. Um, but there's lots of different sizes of these. I've used the really long ones, which I really like, but I just kind of go with whatever's not broken in my bag. <laughs> Along that same trend, you are going to need a brush of some kind. A lot of people use combs. I like the brushes because you can hit a lot more hair at one time, um, and it gets it combed out pretty quickly. But again, a comb like this works just as well. Next, you're gonna need some scissors. Um, I personally really prefer the scissors that you get from the fabric store or the craft store. They're a lot sharper, they're a lot better on the yarn, they cut the hair a lot easier so you're not like tearing up the hair and everything like that. Um, I don't know where I got these from. Actually, I think I stole these from Lauren, not gonna lie. But um, normally I use anything from the fabric store that's a little bit sharper. You can use mini scissors as well, but again, they're not gonna be as easy to cut through the hair. A pull through you can get from pretty much any tack website or tack store. Um, a lot of times they come in the whole braiding kits. I don't use the braiding kits. I literally just use like things from it, like the pull through. Um, but you are gonna need a pull through and you're gonna wanna make sure whatever one you're using, if my camera will focus, has this little tab on the end of it. My camera's not gonna focus, but it's fine. Um, I have a couple that are broken that don't have the tab and they do not work correctly for what you need. Next up, again, this is another preference. Um, a lot of people use quick braid or some people just use straight up water. I honestly just get the cheapest hairspray I can get from the dollar store. The cheaper, the better because it's more sticky and disgusting and it holds the hair a lot better. Um, but then as soon as this gets low, I just fill it with water and it's honestly, it's not that big of a difference. Um, I, the only reason I don't use the quick braid is because the bottles break really easily and I just blow through it and it's pretty expensive to blow through. Um, so I end up just using this stuff cheap from the dollar store. I stock up on it, fill my bag with it, and I'm good to go. Of course, you're going to need some yarn. I personally use yarn. I don't use wire or rubber bands or anything like that. I think it secures the hair a lot better, but you are going to use a good quality yarn. You're going to make sure it doesn't break when you pull on it or anything like that. There's a couple brands that I really like. They're really, they're like maybe $3 a roll from the craft store. Make sure you're getting whatever color Matches your horse's mane. I'm using white today on Diesel's black mane only because I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. Normally I would use black yarn or like blue or green if we're having a fun show or whatever, but get the yarn that matches your horse's hair color. And of course you're gonna want a stool. This is the two-step stool. I got it from Walmart. It is Costco brand. Um, I know they have a three-step, which I'm gonna have to end up getting for Diesel. Um, but this one has lasted me the longest out of all my stools. I've had some like stolen out of the back of my truck and some falling apart. Um, I've had a couple of the footies fall off, but this one has definitely lasted me the longest. Um, personally, when I'm done braiding, or if I know I'm going to be braiding a lot of horses for the night, I'll tie my yarn right here so it's easy access and I can make a lot of it and have all the excess right there. And then you're going to want a bag to store all your stuff. This is literally a $4 bag from Walmart. I put all my yarn in the big pocket and then all of my supplies goes in this like little pocket right there. And then you can store your drinks and stuff right there. What is that? Oh, look at that. That's wax yarn. Let me show you guys. So the wax yarn I'll use a lot on, if it'll further us, I don't know why my camera's not better thing. Um, the wax yarn I'll use a lot on horses with really, really thick hair or like just kind of weird texture hair. It's literally just like, I don't even know if I can get this to focus enough. 
it's just kind of like a sticky yarn of sorts and it just kind of grabs the hair a lot better. The only downside of the wax yarn is of course it's more expensive and it does tear up your hands eventually. Like if you're going to braid all night with this, it will tear up your hands and cause some major calluses on your hands. All right, Diesel's always a good boy for braiding luckily. So hopefully he keeps that streak alive. Just want to show you guys a few things before we roll into the instructional part. I already did two braids just to kind of show you guys what the finished product would look like. That's a little rub from his old cribbing collar, don't mind that. Obviously, like I said, I did the white yarn. Normally I would do black, but just so you guys can see what it looks like. He it looks like he has really, really thick hair, but it actually braids down really nice. Um, normally, if your horse's hair would look like this, I would say, please, please pull it. Um, but when you kind of pull it down into the little braid, it actually braids pretty nicely. So when you are braiding, obviously you're going to want to clip the rest of the hair back so it's out of your workspace. Personally, I like to do five braids at a time. Uh, it keeps them all kind of so you can manage them being the same size and it just works so if you have to move your stool, you can finish this section of braids and then move on to the next one without having to do the entire mane braided down and then move your stool again to pull them all up and tie them. So any other day I would be on my braiding stool, but for the purposes of trying to film this video, I am on the ground. So this is a little bit awkward positioning, but First thing first, you want to grab the chunk of hair that you're going to be using. So I try to stay within, I mean, you can pretty much feel how wide that braid's going to be, but essentially when you compress it, that is how wide your braid is going to be. So, I mean, it's about the width of my thumb. That's about the width of my thumb. Come here, buddy. But again, this is going to be something that you're going to have to play around with because you may have a horse with a really thin mane that you're going to have to take a larger, like width-wise chunk of hair. Um, you may have a horse that's really thick mane, you're going to have to take a little bit thinner so you can fit them all down the neck, but that's just something you're going to want to play with. Once you have that chunk, you're going to want to take your comb, or your clip rather, and just kind of even out that edge so it's a fine edge. That way you're not taking any hair from the next little segment and it's a clean little border there. Then you're going to want to take your quick braid or your water or your hair spare, whatever you're using. And just soak that segment. Again, that's another preference thing, how wet you like it. And then rub it all down so it goes down that segment of hair. The next, next part is what takes a little bit of practice. So you're going to be doing a regular three-strand braid, but you're going to need it to be really, really tight. So it's not going to be like your normal... Oh, stop doing that, buddy. And your shoe. Oh. So the next part is a little bit tricky. So you are going to be doing a regular three strand bait braid, but the different part is you need to be really, really tight. So it's just kind of a different way of using your hands. Um, to do this braid, it can't be loose or else it will fall apart. It will look messy. Another little tip that I have is keep your, let's see if I can get this in the shot, yarn right there on your belt loop. It's easy to grab, easy to keep there. Um, otherwise you can keep it kind of on your stool or somewhere that's easy to grab. So getting into this, I normally lay my yarn in at the 11th braid down and then tie it off at either 21 or 23 based on what the horse's neck looks like, how long the hair is. If it's thinner hair, I'll stop it at 21. If it's thicker, I'll stop it at 23, but you'll see what I mean. His is a little bit thicker, so I normally stop his at 23. So you have your three strands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So right at eleven, I'm going to pinch that off. Whoa, okay, whoa, I know this one. I'm going to take my yarn whoa, and lay that across. So it's just literally going over his neck. And then I'm going to pinch it again, do another pass over, do one more pass over, so now I'm at 13, and bring that down. 14, 15, keep braiding it just like a normal braid with the yarn in there. So now I'm at 23. All I'm going to do is pinch it off with my left hand. Whoa, whoa, good boy. Throw it over that hand. Whoa, I know the five skates, buddy. And then I'm going to loop it. Pull that yarn right behind the braid and pull it tight, but don't break the yarn. 
do that again. And there you have your braid down. Now at this point, I have my scissors. I'm going to move that yarn out of the way so it doesn't accidentally get trimmed. And I'm going to carefully trim the hair, not all the way to the yarn, just in case something happens to the yarn, in kind of an angle so it pulls through the hair really easily. Whoa. Weasel. Whoa. Whoa. Again, pick that yarn up out of the way. Trim it at an angle. Easy as that. Next step, Whoa. I'm going to take my pull through or latch hook, whatever you want to call it. And I'm literally just going to take the braid that I want to pull up, come to the other side of his neck. Whoa. I'm actually going to do it with my non-dominant hand so you guys can actually see it. Come to the other side of his neck, go to the base of that braid all the way up against his neck and push it through so it comes out the other side. Okay? Ooh. Ooh. So I literally just pushed it straight through the braid underneath, okay? And then I'm taking this yarn at the bottom of the braid, Ooh. Ooh. taking this yarn at the bottom of the braid, putting it into the bottom of the latch hook, closing the latch hook, and pulling it up. Make sure your braid folds underneath into a lower loop like that. Then you're going to pull the hair up or pull the yarn up, excuse me, so your yarn is on the other side of the net now. Do it again. Wait, Bubba. There we go. This is the part where I really personally prefer to do groups of braids, so I'll do five at a time, or six, or whatever you want to do. And I put my finger through the loop of the braid, just like that, so it can't get pulled all the way through and then pull it just enough Whoa. so you feel the hair come through. This part Diesel does not like, and that helps the braid lay pretty flat. I'm going to do it again with my remaining braids. All right. And then I like to pinch them close so they're a little bit more flat. And then this is the part where it's important to do a couple braids at a time, because at this point you can make, you can pull them enough so they're all even on that line right there. And then at that point, you bring your yarn back over, you're going to do a whoa, double loop, one, two, start pulling up, get to the base of the braid, but before you pull tight, put your thumb on that braid, make it flat, and then pull tight. One, two, again. This time you're going to go on top of the braid in front, pull tight, just about the middle of the braid, and then one more time, one, two to get that yarn behind the braid and then I'll bring the yarn to the side so I can cut it later. And at this point you're starting to put together your finished product. So keep on going down the mane and you'll have a full braided mane and don't forget your sleazy when you're done so they don't rub them out. All right so we're going to be applying the same concept to the forelock. It's really just a French braid but please 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 be careful around the front of your horse's face especially spraying it. A lot of horses don't like it and will absolutely freak out. Also, side note, how cute is Diesel? Adorable. Okay, moving on. So you're literally just going to start a French braid by taking whoa, a little bit from the middle and both sides at the top of the forelock. And then every time you pass over, you're going to take a little bit more hair from either side. And this, again, is something that takes practice, so do not beat yourself up over this. Another side note is please Please, please never ever cut the forelock. I don't care how long it is, how thick it is. I have done them all. You do not have to cut it. Every time you pass over, just keep taking some more hair. And again, making sure it stays tight the whole time. Whoa. 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 And making sure the forelock and all the other hair is soaked is a really good way to make sure it stays really tight. Mine's a little bit dry, but it's fine. And eventually you're going to get to the part where the hair is no longer attached to his head. And I'm going to go a few more down. 
I'm not counting passes on this one. It's just kind of depending on how much forelock your horse has. Come back up here. Good boy. And then we're going to take our yarn. A lot of horses don't like this too. Oh. And just kind of lay it over. Do two more passes. Bring it down. And braid a couple more. Now this is the tricky part. So you're only going to want to braid until you can fold it up and that braid, the end of that braid, if these will stop falling asleep, come is enough, long enough to match the length of the part attached to your horse's head. So I'm going to do a couple more passes here until that yarn is on the outside. And then I'm going to take it, get all my hair in one spot, stop falling asleep. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. I know the yarn's scary. Pass it over that braid. Whoa, Bubba. And again, this is actually a better way to see it. If you have a loop on the one side, these will please stop. If you have a loop on the one side, you're going to reach through that loop with your fingers, grab the hair or grab the yarn, excuse me, pull tight a couple times, but don't break the yarn. Do that one more time. And then you're going to take your latch hook or your pull through, start at the top of that forelock, push it down. You're going to have to push down far enough so that tab comes out the bottom. And then you're going to take your yarn, put it through, and start to pull it up, but don't pull it all the way through. Well, actually, you can pull the yarn up, excuse me. Come here, bubble. Oh, my yarn's stuck. Pull that yarn out the top. Everybody always wants to cut the forelock off at this point. I'm begging you, please do not. Literally just take your excess hair, twist it around, wrap it around the base of the braid, like the hair part. So that way, when you go to pull your mane up through the forelock, it all just tucks in there beautifully. Whoa. Now you're going to take your latch hook, Whoa. put it through one side, get that piece of yarn, and my yarn keeps wanting to get stuck on my latch hook. Go to the other side. And then just tie you one, two loops, and then one more. And you have a forelock braid when you cut that yarn off. All right, guys, that is it for this video. I hope it is everything you wanted it to be and it all works out for you guys. If you, of course, have any questions, please, please, please let me know in the comment section or DM me on Instagram or anything like that. And like I said, I'll be making more videos for long manes and tails and all that stuff. So I will see you guys in those next videos. Do you want more peppermints? You're chubby. You're chubby and spoiled. Did you see how much you're